Yeah, I tell you what, I'll go with this every time. Whole lot easier. Oh. That way you're on the right side to get in the truck and drive away. Well, a friend of mine came up with the idea that he wanted to put a ladder on his boat, kind of like the guys do on their bass boats so they can go fishing by themselves. Um, he launches this big boat by himself quite often, so it seemed like a good idea to me. I just didn't quite know how I was going to pull it off. Um, I had to make some decisions on what to make it out of. It, steel would be the cheapest way, but aluminum was really the only way to go, and aluminum was going to be quite expensive. Until I got on Facebook Marketplace and found some of these, well, I'm going to call them aluminum 2x4s. They are perfect for building the ladder out of. They have anodizing on them, and I found out that if you, uh, well, basically turn the welder up hot enough, you can burn through the anodized coating, which is the easiest way to do it. It doesn't make for a real clean weld, but it does work. Anyway, what follows is uh, our decision to put a ladder on the boat our idea that we came up with that seemed like it was going to work, and a lot of welding. We'll uh, skip all the welding and just kind of try to make this video as short as possible. Well, not too short. All right, I think we're getting somewhere now. Little uh, proof of concept here. Oop, sorry about that. Something like that. I think that's going to work. Well, it's getting there. Started cutting a couple of the plates. Got to drill a few holes in this. This bottom plate, give you a general idea of what I'm trying to do here. This top plate will be welded to the beam. This little quarter inch space will be tack welded on that. And then this bottom plate will just clamp on the I-beam of the trailer and there'll be a bolt in the front and a bolt behind this about where that clamp is to hold the pressure on it. There'll be one of these on this side and one of these on that side of the trailer on the beam. That should be plenty to hold this ladder on. Between that bottom bracket and this top bracket, which is going to use the three bolts that hold the winch on right here to hold it on, should be plenty strong, I hope. None of my angles are lining up here. Um, we got this at this angle, we got this at kind of this angle, and uh, what my plan is is to cut the corner off of this so I've got flat surfaces to weld to on both sides. So the first thing I need is the angle of this because the ground's not level and the trailer's not level. So I got 3.65. And then I get the angle of this and then with a little bit of math, I know what angle to cut this at, hopefully. And with a little bit of math, we come up with something usable, I think. Well, I've got it marked right there. That's the line I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna cut right through that hole, but that's what happens if you use scrap aluminum. But uh, hey, it's a whole lot cheaper to do this. And this is pretty much, uh, well, maybe a little overkill, but it's pretty much exactly what we need for this project. Take a look at our progress. Oh yeah. Yep, exactly where I wanted to cut. Yay! Cut the rest of it by hand. If it was easy, everybody'd do it. Well, I just remembered where this was at. It was in the toolbox by my lathe out in the other shed. I remembered that just as I was finishing this cut by dragging a hacksaw blade through it. Too many toolboxes. The best thing that I can say about this is that it's a learning experience. If you look on YouTube, you can find out you can weld through anodizing on aluminum tubing. The anodizing on this stuff is a little bit thicker than most, I think. It's pretty tough stuff. Anyway. There's various things that you can do to weld through anodizing, and one of them is like a pulse method, et cetera, et cetera. So let me start by saying this. I am an amateur at welding at best, so taking welding tips from me is like taking tips from the captain of the Titanic on how to navigate through icebergs. But anyway, 
what I found out is that if I run the torch across it one time before I weld it, a very high amperage, just go across it and burn through that anodizing, it helps me weld at a steadier pace across there because the anodizing has already been burnt in. Anodizing mixes with the weld a little bit. What I've seen about this on YouTube is that this will become very, uh, a slightly brittle weld. So uh, the owner of this boat I've already talked to and told him that these might cr have a tendency to crack. Uh, this thing's way over engineered, but anyway, so we're gonna keep inspecting it, see if it cracks, but I found that burning through the anodizing before you make the welding pass, for me, seems to work a lot better. If I was more skilled at holding a steady bead and a steady arc length, I might be able to do it the other way, but I did all the other stuff the other way and I found it very hard to keep burning through that anodizing and keep a puddle at the same time. So this is working a lot better for me. That's a halfway decent looking weld. I think it'll hold the person up standing on a ladder. I hope it does. I know, I know, I said no welding stuff, but uh, what we have here is uh, pretty damn funny. <laughs> I, well, it's funny because it didn't happen, but uh, if you can read what it says on that helmet, that welding helmet has a very light shade shield in it. Uh, I like to use it for the plasma cutter if I'm out of position or whatever, so I don't get slag splattered in my face. But uh, it's for cutting only. I about lost a retina or two right there. Well, I about burned my eyeballs out there. <sighs> Setting up the camera, getting things ready, grabbing the wrong helmet. Woohoo! This is going to be a great weld. I can feel it now. Nope. That ain't gonna work. As I said, as unsteady as my hands are with welding, I like to have a little bit of a cheat if I can find one. Here we go. Touch the filler rod to the tungsten. Well, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. I am pretty new to aluminum welding, especially heavy aluminum welding. And welding through the uh, anodized coating is entirely new to me, but hey, I'm progressing and I'm not afraid to show my progress. Don't tear me up too bad in the comments. Now that I've got this welded together, I can set it back on the trailer and mark out my bolt holes. I've already drilled the bolt holes in the top plate, but I still need to weld it. All right, everything seems to fit together, sort of. Well, it clamps together. I'm gonna weld it together. I'm not gonna burden you with any more welding, but uh, I do have to fit a round peg into a square hole, so there may be a little bit of machining involved. Well, after a little bit of machining, this handrail will slide right down in here. And I've drilled a couple of holes. I'll plug weld it right here and here. And a little bit of cutting on the end of this. And we've carved it out to fit right around that. All right, here we are. Welding complete. Will it fit? Did it warp? Let's hope not. It looks like it's gonna fit. There's supposed to be holes somewhere up here. Where are we at? Oh, too far in. Oh, wrong hole. Oh, she's going to be a little snug. Oh, no. Nope. There we go. Had to line the bottom up. Well, there's one bolt. Line the bottom up again. 
and as you can see right here, uh, mistakes were made. I drew the line where the edge of the trailer was at, and then I drilled the holes on the wrong side of the line, so I had to drill a second set of holes. But uh, we're going to say that it, that's so it fits multiple trailers. Yeah, it was a plan, yep. Snug these up a little bit, and then we'll put the winch on the trailer and see if those bolts still line up. Seems solid. Bolt this on and see what happens next. All right, wrench is down, moment of truth. Let's see if I make it all the way up there or if I end up on the ground. Still gotta move the uh, trailer jack forward a little bit, but. Yeah, no. Good grabs there, good grab there. Yes. It works. Solid, stable. Well, I think it's going to work. All right, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.